I want to drink it. <laughs> ah, he was afraid to finish his beer because for every beer, you have 25 push-ups and 25 air squats. And so now he's nursing the last little bit of his beer. We're trying to get fit during beers and breakdowns. We can't just be sitting here drinking beers without getting more fit. All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. We got an actually pretty cool movie that I have wasn't tracking, I wasn't even aware of. One of you guys recommended it. Turns out it's badass. It's actually really awesome. And it's called The Sandcastle, or just Sandcastle. I think it's just Sandcastle. I joined the reserves for the college money. I don't belong here, and I'm ashamed of that. Pretty much the movie starts by the private ochre trying to get out of war. And so he goes and he slams his hand into the Matt V or into the Humvee door, sorry, uh, until it breaks, thinking that that was going to like send him home. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately for him, that doctor's a badass and he's like, you'll be fine. And so he cuts open the cast and then he, uh, he's like, what's the pain level? One out of 10. And he goes, it's a 10. And he's like, all right, here you go. And he hands him a bottle of Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know at this point that he did that? <clears throat> no, nobody knows. Because he, like, he went away um, where no one was looking and then just starts slamming his hand into the door. Hmm. The funny thing is, I, I, I didn't pay attention when he was shooting, but he slams his left hand into the door, and I wonder if he's a right-handed shooter. Mm. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, because like, left hand being in a cast... You could still fire your weapon. It's not, like, optimal, but you do your right hand. I mean, you can't shoot your gun. You want to pay for that now, or are you going to wait? Well, I can't drink another one unless I pay for it now. <laughs> He's so pissed. Are you counting? Four, five, six. Those sound really fast. All the way down, Abel. No rep. No rep. Which one has a higher ABV? <laughs> this is them doing uh, stair clears, and stair clears are like notoriously difficult to get right. And if you see them flowing up the stairs, it just kind of bothers me because one guy will, he, he did his pitch and he's looking up the stairs, um, but then the other guy goes around and he stays on that same uh, line of fire, which essentially is flagging his buddy up the stairs. And so they did it wrong, but there were, I think there was a couple spots where they did it right. But that's just, just, it's just a good example of how hard stairs are to flow and to flow correctly. So where you're covering uh, the top of the stairs and then you have to shift to the balcony of the next level and then have your guys follow around you um, without flagging anybody and being as safe as possible. Stairs are notoriously difficult. And then uh, a guy gets hit from the window so ideally, as you're crossing that window, you want to go past it as fast as possible. So if I was to do this stairs just where 1109 is paused, I would go to that corner and then shoot, like run across as I'm pulling security back mm -hmm. up the stairs to try and avoid getting hit from that window. Speed is security uh, a lot of times. Okay. And then when he gets hit, my issue is that he's kind of like looking for the bad guy. Listen, no one suspected likely. You either know where he's at, and I'm going to shoot. I'm going to suspect where he's at, and I'm going to shoot, or I'm going to pick the likely, most likely place he shot from, and I'm going to start lighting it up. War is different than, like, civilian knowing your target and seeing your target and identifying your target. You're not going to be able to do that in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's just not realistic. Then the, th the issue I have with this scene, it's not a big deal, but this guy, he just goes that same corner 
He goes to take a shot. He takes accurate fire. And then he goes back to do that same corner again and again and again. Like, dude, he already has you dialed in. Right. He knows where you are. And you don't know where he is. is. So why the fuck would you keep popping out of that same spot? You're just asking to get shot. Everybody's been talking about going home. And now you want us to go some place we don't control for for what? Photo up? Yeah. So basically what just happened here is the guys in his unit were thinking that they were getting ready to go home. Uh Uh-huh. So they're starting to wind down. They're, they've been in some gunfights. They've had their action. Now they're kind of, and it, it's like it goes in a phase when you're in deployment because, like, when you first get there, you're like, fuck it. I may never go home again. And then you start to get in the shit, and you're like, this is it. I'm just trying to make it. You know, I'm going to kill as many as I can, not get killed, protect my people, do the best job I can. But once you hit that start to tail end side where you're like, oh, shit, we're going home soon. Mm-hmm. Everything fucking changes, and that's a very, very dangerous place to be as a soldier because your mind all of a sudden starts thinking again about the possibilities of seeing your family again, about actually making it home. And now you start to get attached to wanting to go home. Mm -hmm. As to where all that stuff before, you were like, fuck it. What do we got to do? Let's do it. Right. And if I make it, I make it. If I don't, fuck it. Like I'm stuck here anyway? Yeah. You're like, I got a fucking job to do. You're in the shit. But once you get on that tail end, that backside, you start thinking about home, it's it's a dangerous spot to be in. It's like as a, a police officer, uh, there's the most dangerous spot as a police officer is like when you're brand, brand new and when you're seasoned and you've been around for 10, 15 years because mm-hmm. you start to get too comfortable. Mm. Kind of kind of the same, but you you as a the soldier, you're getting comfortable. You're like, you're starting to think about home and you're like, fuck. I really want to actually go home. That would be nice to go home and see my family again. And so you get less aggressive. And that's where they just realize that, hey, you're not going home. You're actually going to link up with SF. And they're going to know that that's a more dangerous mission than anything they've been doing. Oh, okay. Because SF is out operating, like, in this a small unit just fucking on their own. Right. So the fact that you're going to go out there with them is a guarantee you're going to go get in the shit and probably some of you aren't coming back. What what are what are they now? So I think these guys are just are infantry. Okay. And I don't want to say just infantry. I don't want to disrespect infantry. Infantry is awesome. But I think these guys are infantry. I used to love sitting in the turret. Really? Fuck yeah. Aren't you exposed up there? Yeah. So the turret's like <coughs> Excuse me. It's like uh we don't do that shit. It's a scary place to be because you're exposed and, like, you know that everyone wants to take out the fucking heavy gun, which is you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like he said, the breeze, it's, it's, you're just watching the fucking road. You got the views, like, you're just chilling. You have no, no job but to just monitor your sector and relax and enjoy the ride. And then if shit starts popping off, lay down as much fire as you can. But it's, it's one of the most dangerous spots, but it's, it's the funnest to be in. Mm. I love being the gunner. All right, guys, your job is real simple. You keep that water flowing when the hearts and minds, and then the Iraqis start pointing fingers and giving me and the boys some targets to hit. But this, so in this, in this spot, they're linking up with the ODA, and so their whole mission is the ODA. I don't know if it was. It was probably from bombs got dropped. It blew up their water supply line for the Iraqis. So the ODA is having trouble uh, getting intel from the locals because they don't, they're don't. they pissed at them for blowing up their water supply. Mm-hmm. So the ODA is like, okay, we'll bring in some people to help you know transport you guys water so we can build some more rapport and you can start giving us intel on high-value targets so we can go get fucking weapons caches and uh, you know uh, HVTs and kill the, you know, the high-value targets, right. which is just a... a a bad guy that's higher up the food chain. Oh, okay. So that's that's what they're linking up with the ODA for. So this is where I had an issue. It was like the SF guy said, get that water flowing. He's telling you to give them fucking water. Just let it fly, dude. Who gives a shit? And the infantry guys, I could tell, you know, they're just tight 
they're like aggressive. They don't know what's going on. And these guys are jumping all over the trucks. So they immediately go in and they're just like pointing the guns at the Iraqis and like yelling at them and shit. Mm. And it's like, that's, it's understandable because you, you don't really have the vibe for the SF area because it's their zone. Right. But the SF guy's like, just fucking let it flow so that way they can get their water and then they'll leave. Right. So if it was me and I said, like, just let the water flow, I would expect them, like, don't do shit for them. Fucking open up the spout and let the water run out. They will fill their own buckets and then they'll get the fuck out of there. Right. And if they fight each other, well, let them handle that. You know, don't you don't have to micromanage these guys. That's got to be hard to watch, though. Oh, it's terrible. You probably just want to help people. You see somebody who can't get water. You want to help them get water. Yeah. You know, somebody's probably fighting them. That sucks. I'm going to fucking shoot. I'm going to take a fucking shot, man. Get the fuck out of here. The issue with that, the main thing is, the main threat there is that the guy's a VBID, vehicle-borne IED. Okay. And that he's trying to get close to your convoy so he could explode. Oh, okay. So that's the main threat. And they identified that. And I'm with the gunner that he shot a warning shot. Uh-huh. Um, I'd be totally cool with him shooting a warning shot. If that was my truck, I'm not speaking for anybody else. This is just what I would do. If this was my truck and that was my gunner, I'd be like, pop a warning shot. Tell him to stop. Pop a warning shot. He doesn't listen. Shoot the engine block. Okay. So... But my issue that they did after that was stopping. So he shot a warning shot, and the truck stopped. Okay. I don't understand why you would stop and then try to search the guy. Fuck that guy. Right. He stopped. He's good. Problem solved. Fucking keep moving. That's my only issue is, like, why would you get out and deal with it? Because what if he is a V-bid? Now you just took five of your fucking guys— and pushed him up to the V bid that you're so worried about. Right. So now he's like, well, fuck it. Boom. And he just gets five people. Pop that warning shot, get him to stop the vehicle. If he doesn't stop with a warning shot, shoot his fucking engine block until he stops and then drive on. So at first, he made the perfect call. He said, push through. So basically what a linear ambush is, is they get online mm -hmm. and they set a kill zone. Okay. So your guys have a left to right limit. And all those guys on the top of that hill had a left to right limit. So you want to wait for your target to get in the kill zone. And then you want to open up fire with everything you got. Okay. So that open up fire is essentially trying to kill as many people as you can and uh, down their vehicles so they're stuck in what we call the kill zone. And that is so then I could reload my mags and I could keep dumping in the kill zone until everyone is dead. Okay. So what he's doing when he says keep going is you're pushing through the kill zone. So they're focused on here. But if you get back here, you have a tactical advantage because they now they have to shift fire or move maneuver to try and get at you okay which buys you some time so you want to get out of that kill zone and that's what he was trying to do unfortunately they downed one of the trucks uh the water truck and now they have to get out and protect their perimeter and shoot back and get those guys to uh retreat oh okay so the i the plan was not to get out of the vehicle so the best case scenario was to just <clears throat> keep moving keep going through take the hits and then keep go going. yeah here's a question i have about the turret um why don't they have um, top cover on those things. Like, why is it why is it always so open? Like, is there nothing? Is has there never been one that has some sort of protection to where you can still swivel around? You know, like on an, an airplane, when you have that bottom gunner and it like moves around, but it's got like a sliver and it's like almost like plexiglass, so you can still see. Yeah. Like, why is that not a thing? Like, why does a gunner have to be so exposed where it's like, yeah, you're shooting in this one direction, but if anybody's on the side, so you're gonna eat one because you can't pay attention to that side. It's like they do have some where there's like armor in the back and it's like a little shell like this. Uh -huh. But you always have to be popped up to be able to see. So what they did, and, and we had this on uh, our deployments and I fucking hated it, is they made it so in the Mat V you could run off a computer. It's like a game. Mm -hmm. So you have a camera outside attached to the gun. Okay. So you're completely safe running a video game, staring at a screen. So I could just find you and shoot you from the video game, and it'll shoot my 50 cal. Why'd you hate that? 
it's miserable because you're staring at a screen to the point where your eyes are on fire because it's dark and you're the only thing lit is your screen. Right. You can't see anything. You have no situational awareness on that screen. You can't smell. You can't hear anything. You are completely, you're just, all you have is visual. So all your senses go away. Okay. But when you're up in that gunner seat, you're so heightened and like you're, you're fucking on edge. You could smell everything. You could see everything. You like, you could, you could feel the vibe in the air. And if you see something, you can go get it. Right. But with the inside the vehicle, if there's shots going off, uh, there's a system to where it'll turn your gun towards the shots that it heard. But then you have to try and find the person, and if you can't see them, it's just it's fucking useless. Oh. So the more armor you have, essentially, the less awareness you have. Why do you call it a Mat V? Uh, it's the type of vehicle. Is it not a Humvee? It's not a Humvee. It's a. Um, they're designed to be like uh, anti IED. Uh -huh. So they lifted them way off the ground and they gave them V holes. So the bottom is shaped like a V. So that way it deflects an explosion from the bottom. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Shit. So it's a big ass fucking, they're like way up off the ground. I never would have known that. Big ass tires. It, it's like gnarly looking front because they got like a, it looks like a, um, like a, what are those pigs with the tusks? Oh, uh, like a, a boar? It looks like a fucking boar. Like it's, it, they're mean looking, dude. They're pretty sick. But yeah, they have the V shaped holes, which is supposed to, because before when you had the flat bottoms, you would hit an IED and it would just smush you into the top. Mm. So then they did the armored V shape. So when we hit IEDs, it would deflect and the people would be able to survive. It's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> Okra, 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 okra. So he ends up making a relationship with the guy that runs a school. And because the whole time they're, they're struggling getting help to, you finish that beer? <laughs> That's another one. You're going to love this. So they're, they're struggling to get people to help them uh, rebuild the water supply. So he found the guy from the school. The, the guy from the school sent him the people to help him. And then they burned the guy from the school alive. Uh, but then that ended up having some benefits because that pissed off the brother from uh, the guy that runs the school. And so then the SF guys end up getting exactly what they want. So mm -hmm. the brother comes and gives them the intel on uh, like weapons caches and where the bad guys are. Okay. So then they go out and they do an operation and then that's when shit hits the fan um, and they really get knee deep into it. Have you ever seen that? Someone burned alive? Uh huh. No. I've seen a lot of dead people, but not burned. I've seen parts of their bodies burned from uh, artillery rounds hitting them mm -hmm. and like like their, their burnt flesh hanging off and like their legs hanging off this way. And I've seen uh, brain matter coming out of their nose, which it's like a, a it was like a white ooze coming out of their nose. And it was like rigor mortis like this. And when I was in elementary school, we took like a, I think it was sixth grade. I think it was like the graduation of the sixth grade. I can't remember how old I was. Um, we went down to this water park. Remember Glen Helen? Yeah. So Glen Helen used to have a water park there for a little bit. They don't have it anymore. But our elementary school took us there. So we went down the buses, and then when we came back. Apparently, a lady in front of us uh, was mentally ill in whatever truck she was in, and I don't know like where she was coming from, but uh, she jumped out of the truck, like in front of us on the freeway, and uh, like a car that was next to it ran over her, and she was dead. And so the we just, I just remember hearing the the bus driver, which was uh, a woman, she screams and and like this the bus stops, like comes to a screeching halt, and then I see her like covering her like her mouth, and I was just like, what's going on? We're all like, what's happening? So the, the adults knew, and they told a, a school bus full of kids. Not to look? Not to look. <laughs> and so what did we do? We found any window we possibly could, and we looked. And we drove by, and so this lady is like, her brain was like on the ground. And like, she was like, obviously, like not alive. And I'm looking at this, and I'm horrified. Like, yeah. like, I, like I couldn't get it out of my head for like two weeks. I had nightmares, all this stuff. And I remember getting back to the school, and they tried to trick us and tell us that she lived. 
like they were having conversations like amongst each other about how she lived and oh it must have been because she was young and all this stuff and i was like you guys are such liars That's, yeah i was like her brain was like a pimple popped Ugh. over the freeway like there's no way she's alive i'm not dumb enough even at that age to think that but i still remember what that lady looks like that's like seared into my brain like it's never gonna leave i saw a dude I'll, I'll, cause I'll tell you to justify it, like that experience for you is I saw a dude die on a motorcycle accident mm -hmm. when I was a kid and that hit me so much harder than seeing body after body after body in Afghanistan. Really? Cause in Afghanistan, like we would wake up and just start our foot patrol and it would be body, 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 body. And like, but that fucking guy for the first time seeing that guy die cause he crashed his three wheeler doing like 60 miles an hour. He actually looked at me. So we were driving down the main road, and there was a, a side of the road on the, in Phelan, mm -hmm. like, you know, the dirt shoulder. He was doing, like, 60 with no helmet on the dirt shoulder. And I told my mom, I was like, can you just pass this guy? Because he's, like, kicking up dust and everything, and he's flying. And she's like, yeah. So she punches it, and I look to my right, and he looks at me. He makes eye contact with me, and he, he just goes, Doo. and he hits a bump in the road, and he goes, Phew. And just and I'm just watching him tumble to his death. Oh my and god! And I was like, ah! <laughs> it was fucking traumatizing, dude. Like, so yeah, like, well, seeing that as a kid, it hits way different. Yeah, it's rough when you're a kid. You just don't have an understanding. I've been in that kind of situation like at night with and it was terrifying. Like I knew someone was watching me and I didn't know where from. Right. And it was fucking creepy, dude. It's probably a stupid question, but are you significantly more scared uh doing a night up than you are during the day? Given how much you can't see? No, it's better at night. Is it really? Yeah. Why? Because we have all the night vision and they don't. Mm. They don't have knots? Mm. They I mean they Maybe like onesies or twosies, but the vast majority didn't. It's muzzle thump. Muzzle thump is when you jack someone with the your muzzle of your rifle in the chest. Mm. Makes them think twice about acting spunky. I don't want to get muzzle thumped. Nope. How difficult is it during gunfights, um, like when you're clearing a house or something like that, to differentiate between like just civilian, like friendly people and somebody who's actually going to try and kill you dude that's a, a misconception about like iraq and afghanistan I, well, I can't speak on iraq afghanistan when there's fighters and they know americans are nearby it's only fighters left in the buildings okay there's not like people sleeping it's not like fucking business as usual like when it's when you're in this compound and you know americans are nearby and that they're looking for you like your women, they they send their women and children away, okay. and it's typically only fighters. Like when we we cleared an uh, ISIS compound, we got through the whole compound, and then I was like, dude, we need to check that place up there. There was like a, a fucking like a pretty big house, mm -hmm. like compound, and so we climbed up and went to check, and there was fucking women everywhere, and we were getting chatter that they they were gonna start using the women as uh, uh, S vests, suicide vests. Okay. So we're like, fuck, they had these women staged, ready to go, so they could strap vests to them and send them out to us. And there was, like, 25 fucking women in this, like, one little compound. So, like, the fact that you think, it's not like you would think in the U.S. where it would be, like, women and children running out at the same time. Maybe in Iraq, but in Afghanistan, they fucking knew we were coming, and only fighters were left. Mm. Is that how they um, they take you guys out? Yeah. Like, whenever you're done with your mission, they should show up in a helicopter and you hop in and leave? Oh, no, it depends on how you infilled. So if you do a helicopter infill, you'll do a helicopter exfill. But mm -hmm. if you drive in, like, Matt V's, then you're driving out. Then you're going back to... Yeah, but they'll do a um, medical exfill with helicopters. So you'll set up okay. a safe LZ, landing zone, 
uh, secure the perimeter to make sure the bird doesn't get shot at as it's landing to pick up the um, injured. Mm -hmm. And then you'll exfil your injured on a, a medevac. Hopefully, for their sake, the, which most likely there'll be a PJ on the um, bird. So a PJ is a pararescue man, and he's an Air Force guy. Okay. And they're basically flight medics. Hmm. And it's they're, it's a fucking badass job, and but they will save your life like on the bird to make sure that you, you know, get back and have the best chance. Hmm. So best case scenario, you get a bird with the PJ, and the PJ start working on you. Have you ever been around one of those when it went off? An IED? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, I've been around my buddies blowing up IEDs with C4, and it rung my fucking bell. So, like, my buddy Travis found a backpack that uh -huh. was an IED, and it was set to go off the minute he touched it because it, it was on, like a, um, like, a mercury switch. Okay. And he cut it open because he's a fucking badass EOD guy cut it open was like oh shit it's an id and so he put c4 on it and i was just on the other side of the wall and he went to blow it and it fucking doom and i was like what the fuck and all of a sudden rock started like falling on my head i was just like shit. oh my god dude he's like sorry bro <laughs> i was like ow <laughs> oh shit that's it they fucking after all that work that this uh team put in to to try and rebuild their uh, water supply route. A uh, guy walks in with the uh, suicide bomb and blows it up. An IED and blows it up. Setting them back to fucking ground zero. There it is, guys. That was a pretty badass movie. Uh, I'm not sure why we invited Abel. He had no questions. This is your fault. You're butt hurt over push-ups and squats. I'm not butt hurt. I'm just saying I'm not... I'm not buzzed. I don't have a decent drunk going on, so I really don't have anything to say. For those of you who don't know me, I'm, like, insanely boring when I'm not drinking. I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> well, then do more push-ups and squats and then drink more. All right, guys, so that's it for Sandcastle. I thought that was a pretty awesome movie, uh, and we're going to go do some push-ups and squats so we can get some more alcohol, and we got to get on to another one. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.